ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पॉइंट्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू वी हैव बीन बास्किंग इन द बायोग्राफिक डिटेल्स ऑफ भगवान श्री सच साई बाबा वी आर ऑलरेडी इमर्स्ड इन जॉय We have been getting responses from the listeners, conveying their ecstasy, excitement on listening to these episodes. Now let's get into today's session. Narsimha Das would narrate later that Baba, as such a had told my father that the granite stone on which he had sat was very holy and those who worship it would have their wishes fulfilled on the advent of the holy grand declaration it became the first platform for sri sach sai baba and was further sanctified the stone stands as a symbol of the divine miracles of bala sachya sai later my father was transferred to another place the person who occupied our house had no children then my father told him to worship the stone and narrated its entire history the gentleman and his wife prayed and worshiped the stone with great devotion and fervor by the grace of baba they were blessed with a son news spread all over varavakonda that baba would see would soon be leaving for puttavarthi when tamirao and his wife heard that baba was leaving they invited him for lunch and served him with great affection tamirao's wife lamented tearfully that she would never see him again consoling her the compassionate baba showed her successively all the dashavatars and incarnations on his chest young sitaramaro felt very sad at parting from baba but baba assured him and other classmates as well you are my schoolmates my companions i'll be with you all again not now but in a later birth i can see you around me much later when i'm with a long white beard narsimadas would recollect baba's last visit to their house he sent word that he would be leaving for puttavarthi and that he would like to have lunch he and all his relatives came my parents did pada puja to him and his parents uh, and garlanded them he asked my parents to bring the shirdi statue my mother brought it and kept it on a small round wooden platform where she offered fruits and coconut a photograph was taken a bus belonging to one gattu ramalingappa was brought to the house for baba to board and it left with musical accompaniments to honor baba while getting into the bus baba told my crying mother not to feel bad for he was always with her with the devotional songs and music they bade him farewell history had been made at urukonda the pious family now burden with the gift of the divine presence returned together to puttaparthi where a new beginning was to be made well that's all are uh, the story with, re- uh, with, uh, with regard to his stay in urukonda now a new chapter in his biography starts from now on we could rather say the mission begins
it was the beginning of a new phase in the life of Satchana Raina Raj. As well in the lives of those around, no more would he be addressed by their name. He was now Sai Baba, sometimes called Bala Sai. The momentous day at Urakonda had made a tremendous impact and people held him in awe. It was a test of faith for the inhabitants of Puttaparthi to accept their former village boy, Satcha, as such a Sai Baba. The birth pangs of this new era of joy were painful, for while some looked with wonder or sympathy at the Razu's family, others expressed hostility, disdain, or skeptic disapproval. However, associates would later remember that at times Baba had to be physically restrained since he was charged with intense energy. Two or more people had to hold his limbs tightly lest he should be overcome by uncontrollable power coming through him. The elders insisted that he be kept under close observation. The bar journey from Uruvakonda culminated at Bukkapatnam, from where he walked briskly across the tank to Puttaparthi. Although the Chitravata river was in spate, he walked through the flood waters with ease. Surprisingly, his clothes did not get wet. Others could neither follow him nor keep with him. Chinna Babaya, a close associate, would recall later. After a few days, his parents brought him to Puttaparthi. He had spells of unconsciousness now and then. Soon after his arrival, he started bhajan singing with the Shirdi Baba idol in front of him. He waved his hand, brought vibhuti, fruits and the other articles of worship. Yes. And gave these to the assembled throng. I tease him, O oh, Satchanayana, you have learned a lot at Orakonda. I used to move about with Razu. We would go on adventurous outings together, like boys are one two. One two, yes. My parents would scold me. You are after uh, a Bhatrazu, the community to which Swami belongs. He will spoil you, mind your work. For a while, Baba stayed alone in the only room of his father. He had a picture of Shirdi Sai Baba and would always pray and recite Dandakam, repeated chanting of God's name. He would also sing bhajans all by himself. One day out of curiosity, two of his cousins, Jayamma and Lakshmi Devamma, both daughters of Venkata Subarazu, went and sat behind him. Baba asked them, Why don't you sing? They replied, they replied, we cannot sing. Baba said, you can make a beginning. They slowly started to sing and later became proficient. He would call them Patala Amailu, the singing girls. Baba's uncles, Venkat Ramarazu and Venkat Subarazu, played the harmonium and the percussion respectively. Sometimes Baba would wait until the sisters arrived to start the bhajan session. Many people coming to Baba, seeking his help in solving their problems, most of which were related to evil spirits, chronic ailments and miscarriages. Most of these visitors were villagers for whom 
advanced medicine was unobtainable. They treated themselves with indigenous medicines, attributing any cure or the absence of one of one to supernatural intervention. The practice of black magic was rampant and superstitions helped in making weak minds vulnerable to psychic manipulations, making incidents of possession common. Baba was the last resort for such helpless people, and they flocked in great numbers, seeking his presence. Soon these acts of healing became acts of immense love and grace, for they not only made those less fortunate ones will again, but also sought to make them spiritually whole, a more complete soul. Baba healing was a transformation through love and transformation to love. One must realize that those who came actually responded to an inner call which was spiritual in nature. The story of Subhadrama of Patralapalli, Patralapalli, Patnam, near Kadiri, is a telling example of the above. Subhadrama gave birth to six children, all of whom died at birth. Adding to this miserable state of affairs, she was apparently influenced by an evil spirit which often troubled her. The family believed that the miscarriages were the influence of an evil spirit. Subhadrama was desperate for relief. The next time she was in the family way, she heard about Baba and his miraculous powers through friends and relatives. She went to Puttaparthi, full of hope, at the end of October 1943. <coughs> Once there, she was overtaken by an Ill illness that was again attributed to influence of an evil spirit. Baba materialized a banana and asked her to eat it in his presence. He also gave her a cup of water to drink. Baba then gave her holy rice and assured her that she would be blessed with a male child in three months' time. He also mentioned that she would have an easy delivery and that she did not have any more fear. Moved by her plight, he blessed her with some more holy rice and told her to keep it under her pillow during the delivery. Blessing her again, he sent her away. True to his promise, Subhadrama gave birth to a male child without any problem on 4th of January 1944. Three months later, when Baba was camping at a place called Kuttagulla, she went there with the child to express her gratitude to him. Baba took the child up in his hands and playfully patted him on the cheek. In response, the child cried out aloud and relieved itself on Baba's robe. <laughs> Baba lovingly named the boy Sainath. On another occasion, when Baba was still living in his parents' house, some villagers from a neighboring village brought a man whose hands and legs were tied. They said that evil spirits had possessed him. He had attacked and even bitten many people. Baba had a man's hands and legs untied and brought before him. He took the man inside the room and closed the door. After half an hour, the door opened. The man emerged completely normal and transformed. However, these uncommon happenings did not justify to the local people how someone could be so different from the other others. They wondered, was it an evil spirit that possessed Baba or 
as others claimed, was he divine. They felt the need to test and certify his divinity by village standards. The day came when the elders of Puttaparthi, with Karanam Subbamma amongst them, approached Baba to test his divinity. Baba, with a lantern in his hand, took some of them into a room, asking others to wait outside. After they went into the room, Baba closed the door and sat in a chair. He then asked, What is it, children? What proof do you want? They replied, they wanted some proof. The lantern went out and the room became dark. A brilliant light emerged from nowhere. The room was filled with the radiant light and they saw Baba as Mahavishnu sitting on the serpent couch. The fierce looking snake spread the skin of its neck into a hood and extended its forked tongue. The group trembled in fear and said, Enough, Swami, we cannot bear it. Please take it away. Instantaneously, the lantern came on the way on and they saw Baba sitting in the chair. As before, overwhelmed by the vision, they tried to touch his feet begging his pardon, but Baba told them, don't do it, you are elders. Thus, a new chapter of healing, a new chapter of miraculous wonders started when he reached Puttaparthi. Perhaps the divine mission started from here. We heard what all that had happened in other places like Kamalapuram, Uravakonda, and Bukkapattam. And now we will be concentrating on his divine mission in Puttaparthi. Thank you for your time.